Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network. Both of our kids have migraine too. And so with them living with the different types of migraine they have that are different from my kind of migraine, and we do it for them at the yeah. end of the day. And it makes us feel better that we've gone through this. So that way we kind of know what avenue they're going to go through and we can help them later on in life as well. Welcome to Talking Head Pain, the podcast that confronts head pain head on. I'm your host, Sarah Shaw, Associate Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion and Community Outreach at the Global Healthy Living Foundation. I have been living with chronic migraine for almost 10 years, and I'm very open about navigating life with my chronic disease as well as my experience living with anxiety. I'm here at Headache on the Hill, and I've been chatting with a number of peers today. And I'm here with Sophia, a first-time patient advocate for Headache on the Hill. So important to step up for Sophia today. Sophia, why is Headache on the Hill so important? And why is advocacy important to you? Yeah, I'm so excited to be at Headache on the Hill for the first time because I'm representing not only my own story, but also my mom who can't be here today. She basically had severe migraines all of her life to the point where she had to quit her job. And it was really heartbreaking seeing her have to choose between her work, her life, and raising me, her child. So when I started getting migraines myself, I had a lot of internalized anger and just fears around what happened. And I started realizing once I start telling my own story, how vitalizing and how open that makes everyone else open so that instead of all of us feeling like we're suffering in silence, that we can actually come together as a community and make the world a better place. You put that so perfectly about being the one to kind of break the cycle and break the silence to let others know not even just other people in the world, but your own family members know that it's okay and we're going to get through this together. And I think that's really what, not only just this event, but what all migrant advocacy events are about. Breaking the silence, reducing the stigma, and letting others know that you're not alone. Sophia, I'm really excited to be here advocating with you today on the Hill and just so happy that you could join us for the podcast. Thank you so much. And we're now joined by another patient advocate, Desina. Desina, same question. Why Headache on the Hill? Why is advocacy so important to you? Well, advocacy is important because people need to know that our headaches are more than just a headache. It is a migraine. It is a disease. And things like step therapy need work. We can't just go through all of these migraine treatments and then expect to hopefully get the drugs that we need to treat our migraine. So that's why I came to advocate for migraine. Thank you, Desina. That's such an important thing, step therapy. I feel like everyone listening to the podcast, myself, we've all been through, a lot of us have been through this process of trialing medications that don't work for us. And it would just be so much easier if we had a straight shot to these newer, better medications that are catered specifically for migraine, you know, instead of having to wait months trialing a medication or for some people even years to get to feeling better. Desina, I look forward to advocating together with you today. And I've been meeting a lot of other advocates here at Headache on the Hill, so I'm now welcoming two guests with me, patient advocate Erica and her husband, Stephen. Erica has been attending Headache on the Hill for about four years now, and this year she's brought along her husband, Stephen, which is his first Headache on the Hill in person. Erica, why is an event like Headache on the Hill important to you? 2020 was my very first Headache on the Hill. And I remember coming and it was just such an amazing experience. And today we heard someone talk about their experience with their first Headache on the Hill. I had a job in government contracting. And when I came and visited different congressmen, it gave me that same sense of purpose. I loved my job working for the government. And this felt like the same thing to me. It was that service, but this time I'm speaking for people who can't speak for themselves or don't ever have the opportunity to do so. So doing something like this is really important to me, and I'm really excited to bring my husband this week because I want him to see what that's like, experience that for himself, because he's never been to something like this. Yeah, I can't explain the feeling, Erica, of just like being in closeness to people that are like us and then having our partners like witness this as well. You know, this is the magic that's like happening behind the scenes. And I do that with my partner, Tara. She comes to me every year and just having that support system with them experiencing it is so amazing. And now I want to turn the mic over to Stephen, Erica's husband. Stephen, with this being your very first headache on the hill, I heard Erica say a little bit about it, but why is it important to you? It's important to me because it's important to Erica and migraine is now part of our life. I remember when she 
stopped working, she would cry and she wanted to know, you know, like, what, what am I going to do now? What's, what's going to happen? And I said, we're just one day at a time, one step at a time. We're going to try to figure this out. We're going to, you know, try different medications, different doctors, whatever we needed to do to get her better. And then when she found that she could be an advocate, I mean, she jumped on that so fast. Uh, she's just a real big hustler, a lover of work. Uh, and this is definitely has been a love for her. So being able to help people and to know that she's not alone was a big deal for her. And anything that she's involved, I definitely want to be involved in and help her in any way that I can. My heart loves that. I think everyone listening loves that as well. Just being able to support your loved one and just be there for them. And you are now part of the migraine family. So it's part of the journey and part of the experience. I want to thank the both of you for all the work that you are doing, not only here, but also on the ground and virtually behind the scenes as well. I think it's so important that advocacy does not start and finish with just one of these events. It's a, like a lifetime of work. It really is. Like both of our kids have migraine too. And so with them living with the different types of migraine they have that are different from my kind of migraine, and we do it for them at the yeah. end of the day. <laughs> and it makes us feel better that we've gone through this. So that way we kind of know what avenue they're going to go through and we can help them later on in life as well. That's to have that. It's almost like instructions. Maybe it's not like the exact how to do it, but at least you're left with like crumbs and steps, like leading you to the big pile of information just to be able to have that for your kids. I think it's so important and a big part of why all of us are here doing what we do. So thank you so much for aggregating today and behind the scenes. Thank you for thank having you. us. Appreciate it very much. And to conclude this special episode live from Heading on the Hill, I want to turn to my last guest. She is a patient advocate, and it's actually Becky's first time at Heading on the Hill. Becky, why do you advocate? Why is it important? I have been with migraine for most of my life, and I don't want the younger population to have to deal with what I dealt with. I want to advocate for the younger population to get the meds that they need and to get the research and the doctors that they need. I want them to have an easier time in the future. That's so important. And I feel like events like this, we are kind of laying the pavement and the roads down for the next generation to come, because if we don't do it, who will? And I know that events like these and other advocacy events that other organizations are doing, not just in my room, but, you know, across different chronic disease spaces are crucial. And not having to go through step therapy of trialing medications that we know aren't specifically created to treat migraine, but have other effects. Maybe that will minimize, you know, disease burden that is falling on, you know, patients like you, other patients that are here. And I think it's really powerful what we're all doing here. I want to thank you for your advocacy and giving a voice to patients that maybe usually don't have a voice. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this special episode of Talking Head Pain, the podcast that confronts head pain head on. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions for us, send us an email at podcast at ghlf.org. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it an honest five-star rating, write a positive review, and spread the word by sharing it with your friends and family. I'm Sarah Shaw, live from Headache on the Hill, and I will see you next time. Be inspired, supported, and empowered. This is the Global Healthy Living Foundation Podcast Network.